So this can be played and shared later. This is definitely going to be an incredible conversation. But let me just first say, um, it's just incredible how much respect you both have for each other. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just... I, you know, just talking to the two of you and now being able to bring the two of you is exciting. So really excited about that. But but seriously, the respect. And I know it'll come out in the conversation. So, but <laughs> yes. I just I feel so underdressed, Dr. Karen. Look, oh, my look. God. Look at those earrings in that dress. This is a kimono. Underneath is nothing on. <laughs> it's a kimono. Yes. <laughs> is it falling to the floor? Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. Okay, I'm making sure. Wait, let me tell people where we are. Okay. I should have... Um... Or maybe I should put the link on. Will you continue to talk? I just want to text everybody and tell them um, where we are because we switched over. Um, don't want to lose anybody, but keep talking. So, well, you know what? Let's just start the conversation off. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things, I really wanted to do this conversation because, you know, as I started this organization um, and I was talking to a lot of different people, you know, people would say to me, well, fashion used to be really fun. It's not fun anymore. And so, you know, because they were saying that, I thought, okay, we need to kind of get back to basics. You know, this is one of the first conversations that I will um, host. Mm -hmm. There will be more conversations coming. But... You know, other than the fact of just wearing clothing, um, you know, to have clothing on, what do you two, and, and, and uh, Karen, we'll start with you or Jonathan, what do you two think the real purpose of fashion is? I mean, I think, and let me say for myself, sorry about that, I used to, for me at one time, fashion was just, you know, I'm from the South, so, you know, I was, I would say I was fashion illiterate. I would wear white stockings and black patent leather shoes and, you know, <laughs> things like that because I didn't know. But now I use fashion as a tool. So, you know, what are your thoughts? I'll start with Dr. Karen. What are your thoughts on the purpose of fashion? Well, I think it's a way to express ourselves. I think, um, you know, a lot of people are really focused on trends and labels, which are great. Um, but it, it's fashion just speaks to, you know, who the person is as an individual you know, um, looking at someone's clothing, I can assess, you know, their personality, if they're going through something at that moment, um, you know, so fashion is more about expression. Um, I think, like I said, you know, a lot of people focus on the trend and, you know, labels, which are great. Those fashion is trendy, fashion is labels, but, you know, it is something deeper to it. So, yeah. Jonathan? What are your thoughts? I totally agree with, with Dr. Karen with that. It's, it's definitely an expression of how you feel. It has nothing to do, you know, with the labels or anything. It's, it's, it invokes a feeling in people. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and when you think about that, what do you think the role of fashion in our life is? Mm. I, I think as far as um, currently right now during the pandemic, the role of fashion has um, increased, right? Um, so our relationship with fashion has increased now because, you know, we have to wear a covering, you know, um, the mask on our face. So our relationship has increased in, in ways that, you know, most people didn't realize, um, you know, with us being able to stay home, I'm, I'm telling clients, I'm telling students to break up the monotony of their day, they should actually change their outfit according to whatever activity that they're doing. Just in the same way that you would put on your gym clothes when you go to the gym, you would put on your dating clothes when you go on a date, you know, you put on your, um, what you wear for work to go to work. So, um, each each activity has a corresponding uniform, and just because we're not leaving our houses and we're confined, doesn't mean that you could just you 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 need to wear your pajamas all day every day. So I think you know what's quintessential to mental health is actually um, you know having 
our our relationship to fashion um evolved. Well, y'all gonna have to forgive me because I'm I'm not dressing every day. <laughs> What are, what are your thoughts? Because I'm, I'm not, and you know, that's the thing. I kind of, um, and I'm jumping way ahead of myself right now. Jonathan, I know it's, can you hear me a little bit better? Some people not text really. me. Some people, hold on. Some people text me and said they couldn't hear me. Um, you know, Jonathan, what are your thoughts about our fashion right now? Like, I've been a little bit slack. I haven't been getting dressed every day. I've been slack. Oh, I have, I have to be totally honest with you. I haven't been dressing every day either. Like, I am so comfortable. Just recently, and it might be a little embarrassed, but it's true. I just threw away these Nike sneakers that I love. I didn't know I was so attached. So I'm saying they ran down, but that's my go-to sneaker. It's the comfort. I do my work, my workout in the meanwhile, I have sneaker in boxes that I've never worn. And I had to psychologically in my head put a day and said that I'm going to throw these away and start replacing them with something else. And I've mm. gotten so comfortable. I put on sweatpants when I go out, or now it's shorts, especially when it was like 80 and, and almost 90 degrees, and just a t-shirt. But so I think in, in what Dr. Karen had mentioned about with changing with the activity, I think that makes a whole lot of sense. And it might change my kind of view on, on how I've been doing this. Yeah, and, and, and um, you know, some people, and I, I'm, I should have um, prefaced that by saying, you know, some people that are not homebodies, they, they can't do, they, all, you know, they're more social, they're more um, extroverted. These right, are the right. times that they need to change outfits, you know, every day, you know, every activity. Um, for, for those who are introverted, homebodies, you know, you can get away with just being comfortable, you know, and most of us that you know, are introverted or in fashion industry, we're used to dressing up every time we go out. So this gives right. us a break, you know, and we can just be comfortable. So I, it depends on where you are as far as your personality, introverted, extroverted, homebody, someone that's really, um, cause I know a lot of people are claustrophobic and they want to get out, they're having cabin fever. So, so I would actually make that, um, that tip for them or suggest that tip for them. But for us, like I wear my, well, I, I've gotten to wear, um, maybe I'm self-disclosing too much, but I, um, I wear kimonos all in my house. You know, just what a great idea yes. because it's like a bathrobe, but it's it's fab. Yes, so it, it lifts my spirits because you know, as a fashionista, you know, I use fashion to express myself. So it lifts my spirits, but I'm just in a robe all day, you know, and I'm walking around, prancing around. So I got a million kimonos now. Um, Do you wear them outside? No, I don't. I actually Why? now now this one I do. This, is, <laughs> this one's really fancy. This is, <laughs> but this needs to be seen, you know. <laughs> but I have ones that are kind of lighter in fabric. They're not sequins, they're just print, and those I just wear in the house. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and talking about that, I need some of those as a matter of fact. <laughs> but do you and Jonathan, I'll start with you. When we talk about African Americans in fashion, do you think that fashion has a language? Do you think do you think we as African Americans use it as a language to communicate? Okay, when you say language, you something that that's speaking to you. What do you mean? Well, and, and that's the question. I mean, do you think we use it? We as African Americans? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Because think about it. Like, like I, you had mentioned, you you know, with your style, it was what? Patent leather shoes and, and black stockings? That sounds very down south southern. You, you know what I mean? It so was. Look, it was. Because I spent half, half of the school year in New York, half down south. Mm. When you would see the regular women during the day, the week, or whatever. But when they went to church, mm. those women mm. are doing the big hats. The men had this, like, they were really speaking. Like, that was the language. It mm. was a sort of, it's sort of a respect. Mm -hmm. You know, Sunday is a respect. 
You put on, you don't put on the tennis shoes. Uh-uh, no tennis shoes. The boys had the, the polished shoes on, the girls, the little lace dresses, and the women, and my grandma had the big hats, and it was sort of like a tradition and an honor and a respect. So it spoke that. It spoke mm -hmm. of respect. Mm-hmm. Dr. Karen, what are your, your thoughts on us using, do you think we use it as a, a language, a communication piece? do um i do i i speak a lot about um well i don't know well i speak a lot about our uh, our current first lady um and how she's not as vocal as our former first lady and how she <laughs> speaks a lot with her fashion she's very vocal if you're if you if you know if you have a fashion eye she's extremely vocal so i'm using her as an example but we do um, we do uh, we do express ourselves. Um, uh, some of us express a comfy language, a language of comfort. Some express a language of pedas. Um, some some eclectic, eccentric. You know. Um, so it 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 uh it does have a language, and some of us speak the same languages, and some of us don't. You know. So yeah. I, so, I, when, I, so when we think about, and I think this is the reason I came up with the question because I looked at it like. Um, like when you have artists like Pierre Moss, who, you know, he has certain language on the attire. Jonathan, like you mentioned the church. Um, I hadn't even thought about what you were saying, Dr. Karen. But then I think back like back in time, um, and Beyonce did a, a video. She it was a, it was a halftime show where they had the hats and they were dressed in that time zone for the black power. So I think that's why I was kind of asking that question if I mean, even right now during times like this, is some of the times the way we wear the language is really trying to communicate that power or communicate, you know, I had a, a past, my past in South Carolina used to say, you know, we dress the way we feel. And I'm mm -hmm. guilty of that. You know, some days you can look at me and tell, okay, you know, if you see me and I'm looking kind of, you know, okay, she's not feeling 100%. Because, you know, grandmother taught me to come out of the house looking decent. So I think that's why I kind of asked that question. Um, with that said, let me move on. So some of my thoughts were, and I am not the guru. That's why I have the two of you here. Um, I looked at fashion kind of how I used to use it as, well, more so how I use it now, how you can use fashion to really, in my mind, empower a person to make them feel better. Mm -hmm. Or you can use fashion, which I think you both alluded to, to diagnose and tell what might be going on with a person. Mm -hmm. Would either of you care to comment on that thought, those thoughts of mine? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, <laughs> so, um, so I have a theory um, um, according to the fashion psychology field and it actually derived from, um, you know, that Sunday's best, right? So, you know, there's nothing new around the sun. Um, so the theory is called mood enhancement dress, where I actually um, define it as dressing to optimize the mood, you know? And we as Black people, people of color, we do this a lot, you know? If we going through whatever we're going through all through the week on Sunday, you put on your best, you know? So that's actually um, what inspired the theory. Um, so I do believe you can dress to uplift your mood. I think, as I said, we as Black people do that a lot and maybe we don't pay attention to it um, because it's so natural to us, but I've studied other cultures and they don't do this. Um, so um, I noticed like what, comes natural to us it doesn't come natural to other others so I literally have to tell you know and it may sound simple to us but I have to tell other cultures people who you know identify with other cultures and say hey you know you can dress up to make yourself feel better you know so um I I think it does play a role a heavily a heavily role a heavy role in our culture Jonathan what are your your thoughts could you say that can you just start Sorry. what do you so, yeah, so what are your thoughts on, like I was talking about using fashion to empower a person, but also using fashion to kind of see where they are and diagnose. I'll tell you, <laughs> I, my mind goes to, um, have either of you seen Tyler Perry's movie, um, Confessions? I think it's mm -hmm. called Confessions. Young lady is, 
um, she's, she's, she's from, you know, like myself, she was naive and she was dressing very naive, but she was fiery. And so the gentleman took advantage of her, died, you know, looking at her to tell where she was. So Jonathan, do you think you can use people to, not use people, sorry, use clothing to really like see where a person is or diagnose something that may be going on in their life? But you know, at, at one point I would say yes, <laughs> but then how fashion has changed and evolved it's so different now because let's say for for instance if people were wearing sneakers like you know like guys will have a suit on and then after work they put on sneakers you know or, or women will put on sneakers like they're running for the metro north or for the train or whatever now sneakers are like twelve hundred dollars and it's a fashion statement you know like you we would dress up in sneakers so there's different types of fashion now that you can't, like a girl can wear very relaxed, and I know um, Dr. Dawn will know this, and wear sweatpants with heels, right, Dr. Dawn? <laughs> she, she said so. I right, that's your was... thing. But yes. before, that wasn't sweatpants. Like, that right, was right. unheard of. Mm -hmm. Like, you would look like, oh, she didn't think much of herself. Girl, mm -hmm. you know she had on sweatpants. <laughs> like, now it's, it's different. You, so if she wears sweatpants, you think that she's confident, she's comfortable in her own skin, she puts some heels on, she's mm -hmm. rocking it. Mm -hmm. You have Balenciaga sneakers, some Gucci sneakers, and you could go to a red carpet event yes. and get people talking. Mm -hmm. Look at Pharrell wow. when he wore the Vivian Westwood oh, hat and an Adidas suit at mm -hmm. the Grammys. Like, it's, like on, He wore that to the red carpet. Do you know how many people were buying that hat? Mm -hmm. You know, wow. you've a sweatshirt, so it all, it's an individual thing of how now you perceive a person and what they're wearing. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a woman can wear a t-shirt, a fabulous t-shirt with a ball gown, you know, like a, 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 a tool kind of something, you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nice accessories, and like she can go anywhere with that. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, she, you know, she had on a t-shirt. Like, it's, it's different. Like, you, I, I can't really, the, the way how I tell now how people is how they walk. Mm. Talk about you know what I mean? Or about a good telltale is the footwear and a mm. bag. Oh, okay. You might yes. see a girl with a camouflage jacket on, some sneakers, but when she got that Hermes bag or uh, Chanel or Balenciaga, it's like, oh, what are you saying? You know, what are you saying? <laughs> It's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it tells a lot. It talks. It talks to you a lot. It does. We're talking about that, Jonathan. Is this better? Can you hear me better now? No. Oh, so was it better yelling? Yes. Okay. <laughs> like that. Like Joy, that. Can you hear her? Yes, I can hear her just fine. Okay. See, I I don't know what it is. God, you you were fine. Okay. All right. Well, some other people were having trouble, but I will, what I'm going to do is send the recording out tomorrow for anybody who missed it and it will be online so everybody can have it. So we will continue the conversation. So, um, talking, that took me forward. Um, do you think people use fashion to kind of hide? Or to try to to try to can't talk create an illusion and I, this tip question comes from um, Whitney Houston. When I think about Whitney Houston and the illusion that they created for her, and she was suffering. So, do you think people outside of her use fashion to create this illusion, and they're hiding maybe like a mask or using it as a, a blanket? A security blanket. Uh, I would. I, I people definitely do that. Um, they do layer after layer after layer. You know, you heard of the cliche retail therapy. They buy and buy and buy and never get to the root of the problem. You know, so um, a lot of people do that, and that's it's. It becomes tricky. So yes, you're gonna dress to you know uplift your mood, but it's like you have to still get to the root of 
you know, there's a fine line, get to the root of what you're hiding um, or what you're not dealing with. So, you know, if you're constantly, you know, I'm just dressing to uplift my mood, but you're not getting to the root of that. So that remind, I mean, as you said, Whitney Houston, I think people can create an illusion. I do think a, an illusion was created around her and it becomes, you know, self-destructive because then the person begins to believe their own illusion that, you know, nothing's wrong with them. They look at themselves, they're dressed up, you know, yet they're crumbling inside, you know? So it becomes self-destructive because they're constantly layering and layering and layering, you know, look after look after look, and they're never getting to the root. And, you know, obviously, you know, to her demise, unfortunate demise, um, yeah, it, it was unhealthy. Jonathan, any thoughts? Yes, I, I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think the hiding part, and not just, you know, with Whitney Houston, just people in general could, I, I've had clients that wanted to hide because they, 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 they say I have a big butt, you know, you, you, so they want to wear baggy clothes or wear, look, I, I'm real conscious of my butt, but yet the clothes are tight. Yeah. You've heard that, Dr. Cam. Like, it's like mm -hmm. such a contradiction. It's like, mm -hmm. but why don't you, you know, don't wear the tight clothes, you know, wear something. Right. So, right. And, or you get the client where she's really thin mm -hmm. and she can wear tighter fitting clothes and she's wearing baggy clothes. Mm -hmm. Like, she's, mm -hmm. she's, it's hiding in some kind of way because, as we know, Dr. Karen, right, mm -hmm. is the thing because of tr some trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or that somebody said something mm -hmm. the dark-skinned woman will say oh i can't wear red lipstick because she heard you too dark to put on that red lipstick girl you know <laughs> right so now I she grew up with she's too dark to put on the lipstick or you can't be out there flirting around with those boys and, and wearing those tight you know so now she's not wearing the jacket anymore mm -hmm. it's, and because I, it's I, in the know, mind of thinking and, and I that whole with thing that. happens I can identify with that because, and that brings up one of the questions because as a kid, red was my favorite color. Mm. But what happened, <laughs> my mother meant no harm, but my mother told me, you know, well, red is for hookers. Mm -hmm. Red is for hookers. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up changing my favorite color to purple. Mm. So I love purple now, but and this is, this is leading to my question because with that said, I later found out that red is one of the colors and the oranges and those colors, those colors that bring out my complexion more. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the question I came up with. Do you think that um, colors and personality are, are related in regards to that? I mean, yeah, I, 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 I talk about this in my book. Um, it's a chapter called Colors and Context. And I talk about what different colors mean. Even when I lecture with my students, I too, um, my mother told me, and like I said, maybe it's a cultural thing. You can't wear red nail polish. You're, you're gonna, you're basically a hoe. That's what she said. So, you know, um, I actually rarely have red things in my closet. And when I do, I feel uh, inherently self-conscious, like, oh, somebody's gonna think I'm a hoe. You know, and, and, and um, you know, when I teach students, it, it is, um, according to psychological research, you know, red is the color to attract, you know, if you want to attract someone towards you. Um, so I, it, there's something there to that. Um, but now, you know, in this time, you know, everyone's like, wear whatever color you want to wear. So I think it's just kind of um, antiquated you know, stuff like cultural, you know, norms that have been like, you know, passed on from generation to generation. Um, and depending on what setting you in, you know, you're in, you may not want to wear red, you know, because there's some old folks that's going to be there. They're going to say, well, baby, you know, I don't do wear that damn red. <laughs> so I, you know, so it just depends on, you know, but I know when I'm around a lot of, um, younger people gen what is it generation z they they wear red any time of the day they don't care you know mm -hmm. but being that you know if our, from our culture i have to be conscious of that so i think it kind of depends on the context the setting that you're in um but yeah i mean i've 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 so many of us have been told you know that about the color red yeah jonathan you you hit on something because that resonated with me you know mm -hmm. um and speaking of that going into that Jonathan, both of you, but I'll start with Jonathan. 
when we think about those myths, those things that we've been told, you know, and, and you hit on the main one for me, talk about that. You know, things we've been told in the church about how we wear our dresses and things like that. How do we identify those things and break out of that bondage? I see it as bondage. Someone else may not, but, and I know there's a fine line, but what are your thoughts on that, Jonathan? But you know what is so interesting that you even, you brought up this question. Now, I like to watch, I, I love to watch Sunday Best on BET, that competition show. Like, mm -hmm. I just love it. So remember back in the day, women did not wear pants to church. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were yeah. not wearing denim and jeans and come mm -hmm. as you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you see those church women, they got on whatever they want. Mm -hmm. They got whatever they want. The men are, are it's, it's just, it's changed. Mm -hmm. That shows you the power of fashion, right? Mm -hmm. It evolves at the time. Mm -hmm. Like the church ain't like the guys, guys are not wearing three piece suits or just, they're just, they casual. Mm -hmm. Look at what's the host of it, the little one. What's his name? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the one who hosts that. Uh, I can't remember his name. Kirk? Kirk Franklin. Yeah. <sighs> he has on Balenciaga, Dior, Gucci. If you want, and the stylist, I know this guy who's a stylist for gospel artists. Mm -hmm. He says the budget is unlimited. Mm. The money and the 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 opulence that they just you, you know what I mean? Because it's it's a status kind of thing. You um, know what I mean? It's a stat. Mm -hmm. They're wearing that and they wear, you know, and it's it's a status thing. I think it just it's such a power. It's such an influence. And that's when I see people who are comfortable or wear designer clothes as if it's nothing. You know, when you're just holding on to something or you can't walk a certain way or your bed, you know, it, it's when it just, I'm wearing my, my, you know, Balenciaga like they're Levi's. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's a way of how you do that. It's such, and it's very prevalent in the African American community, from mm -hmm. how I was raised. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I can attest to that. You know, um, even um, I'm half Caribbean, and in church, even now it's 2020. I, I'm not permitted to wear uh, pants to church. Now, even, even now, and even when I've um, gone to other, you know, other churches, you know, just visiting, I can't even bring myself to wear pants. You know, so, and, and when I do, I have to wear some, something that's um, symbolic of like a dress. So I, when I wore pants, I wore like a cape or something. So something still flowy that gives the dress the appeal or that, that look. Um, but I, I can attest to that, that that's very real <laughs> and it's still going on. <laughs> wow. I had no mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel guilty. I feel like I'm, it's, I'm doing, I'm sinning against God if I wear pants. <laughs> You Isn't know, that something? Yes, and that's going to anybody's church, though, I, because I, you know, that upbringing that stays with you, you know, from childhood. Yes. I can go to anyone's church. I'm, you know, I'm in fashion. It doesn't matter, and I'm like, oh, I gotta wear that dress. I gotta wear that skirt. You know. Yes. So, Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, wow, and yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, no, I'm not going to ask that question because that's personal. So I'm not going to ask that. You better go ahead sound like a hook, didn't it, Dr. Karen? Right. You, better, you better go in there and ask that she question. She threw a hook. You threw a hook out, Carla. <laughs> right, right. I want to know. I ain't fighting. You going to bite? <laughs> I'm going to bite. What, 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 <laughs> look, look, that's going to get us some more views. So come on. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So do you feel... Mm, How does that affect you? You know, mm. do, do you feel bound by that? Does it affect your esteem? Mm. Um, I don't know if it affects my esteem because I am 
um, I'm more feminine in my personality, but I could imagine if I had some type of, um, if I kind of identified on the gender spectrum, more of a, you know, tomboyish or masculine, masculine, masculine uh, type of um, energy, I would, I would actually have a problem with it. But because I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm very feminine, it doesn't bother me. Um, like I said, I've even thought of wearing pants, but then I drape it with some type of cape or something to give it that dress look. So do I feel like I'm in bondage? Um, no, but that's because my, my gen, as far as, you know, how I identify as far as my gender, I'm extreme feminine, you know, so it doesn't bother me. Um, but I would imagine, you know, if I were more, you know, kind of just uh, more identify more, like I have some girlfriends who are more of like a tomboy-ish type of pers persona. I, I think I would have a problem with it. I think it would make me feel like I'm in bondage, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Do you think, because this is one of the questions that I actually had down, do you think mm -hmm. that in certain situations, people would use clothing as a way to, not necessarily- Well, I can't, I can't hear you, Carla. Sorry, I said, so this was actually one of the questions that I had down talking about like certain um, cultural guidelines, more so focusing on us. But do you feel like people will use clothing sometimes as a way to control people? Mm. You, Jonathan, yeah. I'm saying, do you feel like sometimes people will use clothing to um, control people? Uh, she's saying, um, do we feel like, you know, people can use cr clothing to control people? Do you think that they could use it to control people? What an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll let you answer that, doctor. Oh, okay. Um, yes. <laughs> so, yes, um, we can see this clearly in, the, in, in, in prison. Um, you know, most people think fashion, when they think fashion, they think the runway, you know, they think magazines, but fashion is clothing, you know, so even in the prison system, you know, wearing a specific color, you know, is, uh, that's a way to mentally destroy you or mentally keep you in bondage. So um, I've even lectured on this, um, you know, wearing the color pink. If you are, like, if you assault a female officer, they may put you in that pink uniform as opposed to an orange one. And depending on your level of offense, um, if you have a designated, uh, you know, designated color. So um, in doing so, you know, if you can imagine you're in prison for 10 years or something and you, you know, get accustomed to wearing orange or get accustomed to wearing red, you know, when you come out into um, civilization, you may feel like, oh, I cannot wear any other color except this because, you know, it, you know, had that particular uniform that kept you in bondage. So I do think, you know, fashion can keep people in bondage. We're talking about church as well. Um, but then again, it, it, we can also look at it from an uh, individual standpoint. You know, others may not feel like they're in bondage. It just depends on the person. You know, it makes me think of women in the Middle East. You know, us in the West may say, oh, they're in bondage because they're wearing hijabs and habayas. And really, if you go over there, I spent time in Kuwait, some of the the women, they dress down to the nines underneath and they don't feel like they are in bondage. They actually don't want, some women don't want to expose themselves to other men. And when I began, I didn't wear a um, habaya or a hijab, but I actually dressed much, much more conservatively. So I covered my, uh, my shoulders, my legs, you know, and when I came back to the States, I actually didn't have this propensity to show my skin. I felt like, why well, I don't want them looking at me. And it's just a shoulder. It's not even like, I'm not showing no thighs, it's a shoulder, you know? So a lot of us would say that they're in bondage, but it's just a respect thing. So I think, I think um, you know, and to your point, I mean, back to your question, just to conclude it, I think, you know, people can use fashion uh, to keep people in bondage, but it also depends on the person as well you know, um, depend on the person wearing it. Like I said, if it, if it were my friend, I have a friend um, who's a, a noted photographer and uh, she's a part of the LGBTQ community. She dresses very masculine. And I know for sure, if you tell her to wear a skirt to uh, church, like 
you know, oh my God, it, it would be all hell would break loose, you know, no pun intended, you know, so I think it really depends on the individual, but yes, fashion can be used to um, imprison someone. Interesting. I like that. I didn't even think of that. And especially in that context of like in prison. And then, yeah, I never, I haven't, I never looked at it like that. Cause I, I would have said that can it bondage people or control people? Uh, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I'm uh, even when you watch uh, when when people come out into from prison into civilization, if you notice, all of them wear tracksuits. The men wear tracksuits. Yes, and that's because it's a one one monochromatic uniform. It's a custom. Right. It's, a, it's very similar to what they wore in. I mean, granted, they weren't wearing tracksuit, but that one yes. one piece look, you know. Yes. So a lot of them wear tracksuits. It's loose. Um, it's one, they, you know, remember when they're in prison, they don't really have the, the chance to really, oh, I'm going to wear this, I'm going to wear that, I'm going to pick out their outfits. So the tracksuit is just, okay, one-stop shop, I'm going to throw on that. And they right. pretty much, even in 2020, they just wear those Adidas tracksuits, I think. I think it's Adidas or Nikes or something. They just wear the same, you know, look. So I think those things can keep you in bondage even when you're not in bondage. And, right. You know, so, Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's talk, because see, I can go on and on, but I, I have so many questions here, and I knew we weren't going to get to them all. But what, and Karen, you, you might have, Dr. Karen, you might have to repeat this to Jonathan, because whatever's going on with my sound, I don't know. Yes, um, repeat this. Go ahead. Um, what's going on with a person when they want a new image? Like, there's always this saying about um, a woman that cuts her hair is about to change her life. Mm -hmm. So when a person wants a new image and they're design, desiring a new look, are they kind of like coming out of a, a cocoon? Jonathan? Okay, so this is definitely for Jonathan. This is def So when someone uh, desires to change their image and have a new image, you know, when, a, when somebody cuts their hair, they're changing their life. So what is that about? Someone coming in, they all of a sudden want to have a new image. What's that about? You know, it's so interesting because especially during this time, mm -hmm. I have my clients and my girlfriends. So Jonathan, what would you think? If, I'm thinking about going natural. <laughs> I haven't been natural because I've been relaxing and perming my hair ever since high school. Mm -hmm. And like they're in their 40s. So they were, you know, and I was like, God, I think that'll be amazing. <laughs> Why right. don't you try? And they're like, you think so? And one girlfriend of mine did it. She's mm -hmm. short. She's natural. She's loving it. She feels mm -hmm. free. Like, oh. I, in this pandemic, in this quarantine, in this time, people have really been able to really, look, yeah. now you can't go out and try to be all cute or worry <laughs> about, like, the cuteness ain't mattering no more. Mm -hmm. Now you're worrying about paper towels, Clorox, <laughs> water is all these things going to be in the, at the supermarket so you you know you don't really be thinking like should i go on amazon and get this you know go on guilt and buy that and stuff mm -hmm. that's not priority no more mm -mm. Yeah. my hair right change. it's like ooh, okay i got all this stuff but i'm I, i'm caught up in all this fear mm -hmm. i have all this stuff and i'm sitting down eating my feelings away, mm. right? I'm gaining all this weight. I don't like how I look. So now, what are you going to do? Mm. So she starts working out or he starts working out, you know, mm. or the guys start wearing their beard mm -hmm. and keeping it. It's like, oh, or look, going gray and just keeping it. Mm -hmm. It's such a difference because it's like, I don't know how to, what tomorrow's going to be. So I just want to live and be my authentic self, whatever that feels like. So let me take some chances now. Mm -hmm. So I think people are taking chances. They're going into their wardrobe. They're saying, I don't like this. I can't fit this. Because look, they have the time. Yeah. You have the time to do it. So get rid of this. Let me, look, let me give this away. Mm -hmm. Right? So even mm -hmm. doing that, like, I, I don't know who, because we feel as if that we need to do some service and be able to help somebody in a way. So let me pack that away for donations for that. You know, mm -hmm. I can't fit that anymore or I'm going to get down to that size. It's changed perspective on how people are thinking. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then that's where Dr. Karen and myself will come in and talk to them and, and, and guide. It's, it's, it's a mm -hmm. guiding thing. When was the last time you wore that? Mm -hmm. It says, I can't even, I can't even fit that. Like I got size two, four, six, eight, all that. <laughs> like the realistic is I'm never going to be a size two again mm -hmm. and let that go. And guess what? It's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. oh, look, I'm not going to be a size eight when my cousin just died. Mm. Right? Mm. Or mama just got infected with it. Mm. So I can let go of that stuff and it doesn't mean that much to me. So how I have to go in the inside now and start exercising, taking my blood medication mm -hmm. and, and realize that I have diabetes and stop eating that stuff because I want to be around and I want to be healthy for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. It's not about a man. It's not about like it just shifts and it changes. So when she sees in the magazine or go mm -hmm. on social media or she's outside, and this is one thing that I always get my clients, and mm -hmm. they always start to cry or you mm -hmm. feel a mm -hmm. shift, and she says, I never thought that I could look like that. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, you ever see the women or you see something and know that we're the same size. I know, you know, I know I have style, but I never look like that. Mm -hmm. So, and, right? Talking mm -hmm. about that, talk about that path. Like, I mean, that path to healing, because it sounds like at that moment, there was a shift. There was a healing that took place. Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So right now during COVID, mm -hmm. you've already talked about this. It sounds like a lot of people are coming out of that cocoon. They're yes. really looking within themselves. Mm -hmm. So what are you each, and we'll start with Jonathan. You know, mm -hmm. what are you, what are, and I say this because, and we'll ask later how people can get in touch with you for your services. But based upon the economy right now, if someone's not able to afford your services, what are tips that you would offer for them to start to shed that skin, to heal, and use clothing as a way to do it? Well, I'll give a $2 tip. Yeah. Because I can't do yeah. no more than that. No. <laughs> this is business. You, you know what the thing is? Um, and I know Dr. Karen can attest to this. It's self-awareness. Mm. You know what I mean? And when you really t take a look and start being really honest with yourself and know who you are, that's where it comes from. Then from there, it opens up the conversation and the dialogue and you look at things differently. Mm -hmm. I've had women who are size zero and mm -hmm. they would wear a size four, five, or six. Mm -hmm. and had no idea when I faced them in the mirror and they're looking and I'm saying, that's not your size. Yeah. And, I, and they're like, no, no, no. I had one client, she's works out. She is this fit and she used to go for seven, eight. And I say, you ain't no seven, eight, you're a four. Uh-uh. I said, try this uh -huh. on. She comes out and she says, oh my God, I can fit this. There's something that, and Dr. Karen can help me on this with this, and mm -hmm. there's something that women see, or men as well, because they're wearing a waist 36. I'm like, put in a, the 34. Like, mm -hmm. that's really too big. And they seem it just bunching up and gathering. Like, in their I've seen minds, that. Yeah. they see something different than mm -hmm. what I see. And then, they, do you know, it, it's amazing after that. What is that called? What is that, doctor? Uh, that's called body dysmorphia. You know, when you look body in the mirror. Body dysmorphia. And how you externally, how you externally appear doesn't match how you see yourself internally. Yes. Um, that's so a real thing, right? That's a real, that's a real psychological thing because so many people have it. And you got to think, like, now with social media, you look at yourself, you take a picture of yourself and you're like, mm, I don't. I don't like that, you know, or I don't see that. But millions of people can say, I like it, or you great, you cute. But yes. you just, it just doesn't match on the inside, you know? So uh, that's actually called body dysmorphia. It's a real thing. 
especially as now we, we have access to cameras 24 seven, you know, uh, mirrors, reflections, you know, so it's, it's a real thing. And I think just even in the black community, um, cause I was thinking of that, like, what's up with that? You know, not us not dressing our sizes and we, you know, I, I know I've been shamed, you know, body shamed, but oh, you too skinny girl, you need to eat. Every time I go home to the Midwest, oh, you need to, you need to eat. And I'm like, I'm eating enough. I'm fine. You know? So I was even thinking of that, you know, like in the black community, it's not even cool or acceptable to be a certain size. You know, you have to be voluptuous or, you know, kind of thick or slim thick or whatever yes. they call it these days. You know, so I was thinking of that, like, wow, a, a lot of people, you know, because even myself, I was like, oh, I'm a size four. And they're like, no, girl, you're a size two. And I'm like, but you sure you want to check that measurement real quick? Because I swear I have a size four. And I re I was like, Look, get to the root of that. And I'm like, oh, because every time I go home, I get, girl, you need to eat. And I'm trying to, you know, and they don't go nowhere. I got a fast metabolism. Thank God, yeah. you know. But, it, it, you know, so I think it's, I think it's that body dysmorphia. And I think we all, like I said, when, when there, there's mirrors now, there's cameras, there's all reflections. We constantly on our phones taking selfies and stuff, you know. So I feel like um, it's a real thing. And. I just think that it's evolved now because of social media. It's gotten worse, actually. Yes. It's gotten worse. It's, yes. it's gotten worse. And maybe you look a certain way in the mirror or in a reflection, you look bigger, maybe, maybe, than what you are in real life. Maybe that's a thing, too. You know, maybe you look bigger on camera, you know, so. Right. Um, and people can't, it can't register like, oh, no, I am smaller than what I what I appear to be. So right. it's a real thing. And I think in the Black community, you know, within our culture, it's a real thing, too. Okay. Do you think, this is me now, do mm -hmm. you think that comes from the church? Ooh. And Does I, that come I, from the church? Yes. And I, I, asked, I asked that question because, you know, I was taught, you know, you, you know, you kind of hide your body. But now we're identifying our body. We're framing our body with clothing. So do you think that's one of those things that kind of came out of our roots out of the church? Mm, I think you're on to something now. Look, I need to, we might have to come out with a new research study. I think you're on to something, you know. Oh, got taught, that. Look, I mean, yeah, really. Because we're taught to cover and like, oh, your, your, your skirt got to be a certain length. And even when you go to school, you can't dress. But now, I, no, in 2020 now, I mean, they're wearing a lot more, and men and women are wearing a lot more form, uh, forming, you know, form your figure clothing, you know, even men, it's not, you know, they, everything is close to the skin now, close to the mm -hmm. body, so I, I think that's, I mean, that's upward as far as the trend is going, um, but maybe, you know, the root of it, if we're talking, you know, et etymology, maybe it comes from Maybe it comes from the church, you know, and us trying to be pleasing to God, you know, maybe. Mm. Mm. Okay, question. Now we're talking about like, so you're coming out of your cocoon. Mm -hmm. um, do you think someone can use clothing, fashion to kind of rewire their thought system? Yes, um, I, I speak a lot of this for students who are like, because right now um, the new age manifesting is really in so i've actually spoke to a lot of students and clients about you know i want to be this type of person and i'm like well dress like that who say you can't dress like that you want to be a teacher dress like a teacher you want to be a model dress like a model you know so it's almost like that that cliche dress for the job you want you know so i do think you can um use clothing to become something that you are you you aspire to be and i think in terms it can rewire you um, you know, because clothing is just more, like we said, it's more than fashion. So I think you can use clothing to rewire yourself. Um, I know before fashion, before this fashion psychologist thing was a trend and everybody wanted to do it. <laughs> um, I used to dress up and because I used to tell myself, well, what would a fashion psychologist wear? And I would be like, oh, she would be elaborate, you know, but she would be smart too. So I used to have this like sequin look and like this smart nerdy look at the same time and so i would walk up to people and they would say what do you do i'm a fashion psychologist to the point that i started believing it because i started dressing like i think a fashion psychologist would dress like then you got all these girls now oh i'm a fashion psychologist because they dress you know they whatever the unit corresponding uniform is so i do think mm -hmm. you can dress to rewire yourself and just as we said you know you can dress and it can um help hold you in bondage 
you know, and like those, like I said, prisoners coming out and they, they haven't rewired themselves. They, they you know, so they're going to wear those track suits similar yes. to what they wore in prison. So I think it can be used to rewire your brain into, um, you know, believing a certain belief system. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> I agree on that. I have a friend now, very close friend, who, who he's a, a fitness guy. He's into fitness. He just, he's very athletic. He rides his bike. He works out at 7.30 in the morning. And he says, I want to, I think I want, I want to start dressing a little preppy. Mm. You, you know, because now he's be, of the COVID and a lot of people not working. He's thinking of changing careers. And he's mm. like, I don't really know what that looks like. But he knows that he wants to change his attire to a little preppy. So mm. to be a little more conservative, it's what does that look like? Is it a button down shirt? You know, like, mm -hmm. I guess it'll be his interpretation of mm -hmm. what that's going to look like. So right, yes, right. it is a rewind with that because it's in your thinking of if you, because when I put on a suit, mm -hmm. I mean, there's something that's, and especially a hat, if I do a, a my big mm -hmm. hat, mm -hmm. when I do the big oh, one. Oh, I love your hat, on, yeah. If I do just a little small one, you know. But yeah. when the big one comes out, or when the suit comes on, I'm you. Know, it's ready. It's empowered. When you come to the event, they're like, "Oh, you know." They they see you. It's mm -hmm. just something like that rewires me for that night. It's mm -hmm. for wherever I'm going. I say, "Okay, I'm gonna do." Okay, should I do a print? Should I do that? Should I just be very basic? It does. Mm -hmm. It adds it enhances that night in my mood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I would add to that, it, it's, it's, this is important, is um, how people respond to you. So how yes. do you feel about yourself? And then, like you said, your friend who is, he goes from fitness trainer, this fitness look, into this preppy look, and he kind of figure out, trying to figure out, well, what is my next move? What is my next career move? Mm -hmm. And it'll be in turn, maybe he'll get an opportunity because he's dressed in a preppy conservative way, and maybe he'll be walking down the street during COVID, who knows? And somebody may say, oh, or do you do? And they assume yeah. that he does whatever conservative yes. preppy person does. I don't know what job they do. And then, bam, he got the, the hand him his business card and he got a job opportunity, you know? So I think it's also how other, how you feel about yourself, but then how other people respond. So you feel like taller than life in your tall hat. And then people are, when you walk in a room, people are all eyes on you. Like, well, who's the, who, 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 what's going on? You know? So it's all about how, also how people respond to you as well. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So do you think that it sounds like from what you both are saying, fashion can be used to really liberate a person? Jonathan? Can fashion be used to... To liberate somebody? Oh, to liberate somebody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fashion can definitely liberate somebody. I'm th as simple as a pair of panties. Right? Mm -hmm. Y'all yes. women know. Right? Yes. Yes. I'm talking about you had this long day. You <laughs> So go and, and get some lace panties mm -hmm. and this nice bra. And it doesn't even have to be for anybody else. It's just going to be for you. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. that feeling. It liberates. Mm -hmm. You take it off. You know, just the taking it off or just there. Mm -hmm. you, you know, bare chested. Take it mm -hmm. off and just have on, look, or have on the boxes. Mm -hmm. His boxes. Mm -hmm. Right? His, mm -hmm. his shirt. Mm -hmm. His big oversized shirt on because he just left to go to work. <laughs> and you, right? You and I'm liberating late, right? <laughs> That's, you can't get no more liberating than that. So, yes, <laughs> fashion does liberate. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, this, this is a good, this is a good talk. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna have to do this again, but I'm gonna have to put this record. I have to put this recording up. Oh my god! So I'm gonna, cause I would go on and on, but I have to. <laughs> I have to wrap up. So I'm gonna ask you a couple of quick questions. Um, tell me, is 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 one of these old statements? Tell me if you think the statement is bondage. If it, it puts someone in bondage, if it liberates them. Or if it might be a statement of wisdom. 
people treat you how they see you. Jonathan, could you hear? People treat you how they see you. You think that's a bondage statement, a liberation statement, or a wisdom statement? Oh, I think it's I think it's a little wisdom behind that because yeah, in some aspects, people do treat you how they see you. I mean, especially if it's it's an event. Or it's somewhere if you're dressed appropriately, mm -hmm. and meaning like if it's black tie and you mm -hmm. you dress accordingly. If it's a sporting event and you're dressed accordingly, but then just something a little extra, mm -hmm. you know, it could be the color that you wear or the mm -hmm. tie that you wear or the the dress where it's not. It's just something a little extra. I think people do treat you of what you wear. Yes. Unfortunately, but they I do. But Yes, and, and he, he, I'm going to just piggyback off that. He said, unfortunately, because in 2020, it's unfortunate. You should be able to wear whatever the hell you want to wear and not have people judge you. But in the society, we're judging. But it, it'll be interesting to see post-COVID, now that we all got comfy and we don't, we're not dressing for others anymore, we're dressing for ourselves, it'll be interesting to see mm. um, if this statement will be bondage, will be something of bondage because now, you know, the CEO or whoever, we, we all, even as fashionistas, we go outside in our sweats now. Like, I'm in yes. all black. You can't see me. I got glasses on. I got my mask on. You know, so <laughs> yeah. look, if you're judging me, look, you know, I'm, I work in fashion. You know, so it'll be interesting to see post-COVID um, how this statement of wisdom, how it may matriculate into bondage. Because people don't even, like, you know, he mentioned someone that shaved off their head, you know, so... People don't care anymore. So is it? Is it? Maybe that's going to be a bondage statement. I don't know. We'll see in the future. Right. But you know, you hit on something. So I'm gonna have to skip one of those questions to slide this question in. Okay. The mask. Let's talk about the mask for a minute. Mm -hmm. How do you think? Let's start with Jonathan. How do you think the mask is affecting people when it comes to fashion? I mean, I've seen different things with it. But do you think that? Jonathan, do you think the masks are affecting do you? Do you think the psychological, psychologically, masks are affecting people in their fashion sense? How do you, you think? You know what's so funny? At first, I was wearing the blue. You know the regular dollar mask that you could just buy the blue one. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends, we were on 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 face to, on face live. We were on Facebook mm -hmm. live, and he's like, "Honey, what do you got on? What is that?" Oh, uh, 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 you need a, you need something more fashionable than that, because I I just thought that was gonna last for you know two months the most. Yeah. Right. Now it's a fashion statement. Now mm -hmm. I, I, I got African mask. I can't breathe mask. <laughs> camouflage mask. I'm trying to match up with the, you know, because look, wallet keys mask. While it please, man. Like it, it's a right. That's this part. I'm used to it now. Oh I'm God. used to it. It's the new normal. Yeah. I like to see the people that get, get very creative with it. You know yeah. the mask, and then I seen a girl with the head wrap with, the head, with head. matching her mask. Yeah. I saw a guy with a shirt, and he had the mask on. But it was like a. It wasn't like a t-shirt. It was like a regular kind of Calvin Klein. Mm -hmm. Kind of shirt, you know, yeah. and he had a man. I was, I thought it was so thoughtful and mm -hmm. so chic, mm -hmm. right, Doctor Cameron? If you see mm -hmm. somebody look, matching look, now the attire we, with the mask, now we gonna be like, what is your mask there about you? I didn't got look. I got Fendi mask. <laughs> yes. I didn't got yes. I got the black little number. You know, yes. so at this point, it's like, what is your mask say about you? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes. so it's the statement piece and look and look like we ain't we gonna be doing this for a long time and it's even an after, accessory. yes and even after the covid maybe we still be scared that we'll get the pathogen so we still gonna be masked up you know so yeah <laughs> oh my god this has been great this has been great so tell me both of you how do you you know what's why is this so important to you that you do i mean you do it in different ways but you're accomplishing the same thing, really helping people through the therapy of fashion. So mm -hmm. why do you both, why is this both important to you? Oh, oh, okay. 
Oh, okay, I'll start. Well, I can end this by saying that Jonathan, I used to watch him on television saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. And so to be on, I'm about to cry and everything, but to be on this panel or talk, and he's on here. This is like a dream come true. I'm trying not to be a fangirl. And he called me here calling me doctor. I feel like he shouldn't even call me doctor. You know, I'm not, I'm not worthy. So, I mean, it's the same thing. Um, I just think that, you know, I, I get, you know, as, as millennials, you know, now we want to remix everything, but it's the same thing. It's the same. He's saying the same thing I'm saying. So it's, it's just, uh, an evolution. And I'm just glad that, um, he did what he did because if he didn't do what he did and is still doing it, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. You know, nobody would even pay attention to what I'm doing. So I think that, you know, I, I, you know, this is just me paying homage. So it's all the same thing. Therapy and fashion. Fashion is therapy. And if he didn't do what he was doing, I wouldn't be able to be here. I wouldn't. They would be like, Dawn, fashion psychology what? Fashion psychology who? <laughs> so, you know, so it, it's, it's just a, this is a, a full circle moment for me right here. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know what? I feel the same way about you. I saw you on a talk with somebody. Then I Googled you, of course. I'm like, who's this girl, honey? And then I saw the TED Talk. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, she saw the TED Talk. Okay. You know, and then there's something about when I see this skin, when I just see us. I just root, I root yes. for us. Yes. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. just, you better do it. Yes. Do it, however yes. you do it, but do it right. Yes. Do it right, do it with integrity, do it with class, mm. do it, you don't really do it right mm. if you're going to do it, mm. and you're doing it. I'm thank very, you. very proud of you. Aww, very I'm proud of you. Thank you, thank you. Yes. And I, you. I do what I do because of when we talked about church, and we mm -hmm. talk about these different things that people grew up with and learned mm -hmm. to change that whole conversation and how we think and look at fashion and what it means. My hashtag is beyond the clothes. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you, do you really care? Of like, <laughs> uh, you know, when I, she bought this dress or you look good in that dress. The connection is when you find out about a person and they told you I was molested. Mm -hmm. They told you mm -hmm. I don't like getting older. Mm -hmm. They said I fear this. I'm ready to divorce my husband. Yeah. I'm doing you like all this intimate yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the healing comes in and then it's not with the clothes, it's the bonding. I just recently had a client and she, and it's so hard to even call them clients and friend, and she was thinking about separating from her husband and she talked about that process to me and was so open and so vulnerable mm. and so raw at the time. And I'm thinking that I have this, look, I have this gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that people expose themselves to me so the backdrop of it is fashion because mm -hmm. that's what I love so yes. I incorporated that with mm -hmm. loving people into what I have to do to make myself have a living and that's what I do and people generally are drawn to that because look mm -hmm. I'm a stylist I do retail I mm -hmm. sell closet mm -hmm. edits anybody can do that not me. Right? Not me. But nobody can do it like me. <laughs> and get you to I'm open very up and feel on people mm -hmm. come for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And there's and a big response, Dr. Karen. There's yeah. a responsibility mm -hmm. that we yeah. have. Yes, and the and the, the the confidential, like he didn't notice he didn't mention any names. He felt uncomfortable. He was saying it's a client, you know, you say it's a friend. So to get someone to open up to you while they're exposing themselves, taking off their clothes, you know, yeah. that, mm. that, and that's why I said that there wouldn't be a Dawn Karen if if Jonathan didn't do what he because people would you know they have to think oh yeah I did that with Jonathan or I saw that on his show oh that's what you do you do something like that yeah you know yeah. so it, it's. It's coming full circle and what he does, like I said, if he hadn't hadn't give people, you know, makeovers and style people and get them to buy certain things and then they open up to them. When people say fashion psychology, they'd be like, What? 
you know, because he, he laid that foundation. That's why I'm able to do what I'm doing. So it's just a beautiful thing. It's really and beautiful. Then the little girls and boys that see you mm -hmm. and say that yeah. I can do that too, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she's one of us. To see a black person, mm -hmm. a black man on television and fashion making money, right? This is not, a, this wasn't a side gig. Like, oh, I'm just, you know, I got my day job. This is the day, this is the day job, you know? So it's, That's it's that was huge. Like, oh, I can be on television. Okay. I don't got to make a fool of myself on television. Mm -hmm. I don't got to show my butt to get on television. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can be reputable mm -hmm. in fashion and I don't have blonde hair. You know, so I, I just, it's, it's a full circle moment. I really, this, this, this lot, I don't want to get all, we about to do praise. Oh my right God, I have to get your phone number. We have to exchange numbers, um, yes. Carla. You have to yes. give me her number. Yes. So this is a beautiful thing, but it, well, like I said, he laid the foundation. Okay. Well, when we, when I take it off, you two stay, don't move. Yes. Okay. So last, um, question for you. How can people contact you and are there any projects that, upcoming projects that you can talk about? That is so interesting. I, at my Gmail, it's my name, Jonathan Bardrick at gmail.com, which is yes. very easy. My Instagram, my Twitter, everything is my name. And I am working on a project, but I can't talk about it. <laughs> Well, well, um, you can find me, Dr. Dawn Karen, just type in Dawn with two N's, Karen, you be able to find me on every, every, just, just find me, you can find me, um, <laughs> and, uh, what I'm working on, I'm working on a lot of stuff, you know, I'm just trying not to be bored and be depressed during the COVID, yeah. so I'm trying to work on stuff that people ain't even seen yet, um, but I can say, I, they, they were talking to me, um, about being, uh, 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 doing something with television, which, my my and elder has, <laughs> has done this so they have they were mentioning this pre-covid um so I'm, I'm assuming that's up my alley when this is all over um uh i'm accepting students at the fashion psychology institute um i'm trying to think anything else i'm doing i don't know i'm just i'm i'm just happy to just make a living at this point, yeah. <laughs> this point you know so yeah <laughs> Okay. okay. And so, Jonathan, I know that the show Born was that borrowed, old, refurbished, and new. That's yes. playing in in what fifty six countries? Fifty sixty eight. Sixty eight. So people can see that now. Um, oh yeah, you can see it on iTunes, okay. uh, Apple TV, and Amazon. Born to yes. Style. I love that show. I'm telling. I didn't really watch reality until I watched your show. Um, and Dr. Dawn, you have a book. How can people can get your book on Amazon? I'm so sorry. I forgot about my book. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Look, uh, Dress yes! Your Best Life. Dress Your Best Life is available in 22 countries and four languages. Um, I'm trying to get it in China next. I'm just happy. They tried to, no, I can't tell y'all that. But yes, um, I'll tell y'all that off the camera. But yes, <laughs> this is Dress Your Best Life. It's a it's a great book. It's an easy read, and you can buy it, and it'll tell you all about your, your getting your whole life. So, all right. And if anybody, well, when anybody buys it, if you consider, it doesn't take anything from Dr. Karen, but if you go through Amazon Smile, they will donate 0.5 percent to my nonprofit. So yes. please consider watching Jonathan's show, watching her book, and mm -hmm. other than that, do you have any final words for anybody? Yes. <laughs> I, don't I, um, uh, I don't have the final words final words final words um just you can you're allowed to wear your pajamas all day every day <laughs> so my thing is just stay safe stay continue to be safe stay beautiful be authentic tell tell the truth and tell yourself the truth mm. most of all right Love Yes. And just look, this is when I wake up. If you don't believe in a higher power and call them God, just call, call them something. Just mm -hmm. believe in something and know that this too shall pass. Yes. Right? This Amen. too shall pass. Amen. Okay. With that, I'm signing off. Thank you all. Have a good night. Good night. Mm -hmm.